So, the X-Men franchise has been a huge staple of the superhero movie genre for the past 20 years. Despite their many missteps, they are the reason that we are in this amazing era for comic book movies. The first X-Men trilogy paved the way for the MCU. If X-Men never happened, we probably never would have gotten an MCU, or at least we wouldn't have gotten it as soon as we did. They gave Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige a list of do's and don'ts when it came to the Avengers, and a lot of times the X-Men movies died so that the MCU could live. The X-Men movies would have their missteps, and then Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios would know exactly how to avoid those missteps when they were making the Avengers. And the X-Men movies did a great job at showing this en ensemble cast of comic book characters 12 years before the Avengers even got there. So with all that said, there's a bit of sadness that comes with this movie. The franchise is over now, and I think there's so many people who couldn't wait for these movies to end. But, think of Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman and Michael Fassbender, three of the absolute best castings of any comic book character ever, and we will never see them as these characters again. Yes, new people will take on the roles, and I'm sure they'll do a great job, but those three were just, they were the characters. And we'll never really see a Logan-style movie in the MCU, and yeah, we're gaining stuff, but we're just going to lose a hell of a lot of stuff too. Before I get into actually talking about the movie, I just want to uh, preface this by saying that I generally have had different opinions than most on the X-Men movies. I think 1 and 2 haven't held up very well and just aren't that interesting. While I think Wolverine Origins is given too much flack, I genuinely love Apocalypse and I think The Wolverine is a very boring movie, so keep that in mind. I'm also going to try and stay relatively spoiler free, but to be honest, this review isn't out particularly early, so while I'm not going to go out of my way to spoil things, there might be some uh, little things that could be considered that. So Dark Phoenix is directed by Simon Kimberg, and this is his first time directing ever. He's been involved with this franchise for a long time, but never as a director, and that's kind of where I want to start this review at. Talking about how stylistically this is one of the most unique movies in the franchise, I guess, well... Unique normally means it kind of stands out, but now that I say it out loud, I don't necessarily believe this movie stands out, like at all. I just mean this movie is different. It doesn't feel or look or even sound like a traditional X-Men movie. The original trilogy, Origins, and the most recent trilogy all felt very similar, but this movie kind of slots itself out of that. I wonder if they deliberately went out of their way to make this movie unlike the prior X-Men movies in that stylistic way. But to be honest, I'm more looking, I might be looking too deep into this, and it's just the fact that Kimberg is new to all of this. In most parts of the world, this movie isn't even being released under the X-Men title. Uh, it's just being called Dark Phoenix. It was called X-Men Dark Phoenix in Ireland because Ireland and England do things weirdly when it comes to movies. Like, for example, the Avengers here was called Avengers Assemble, not the Avengers. And now Dark Phoenix was called X-Men Dark Phoenix. Um... But not just that, the soundtrack is also very different, and there's absolutely no sign of the iconic X-Men theme that has been very prevalent in these movies since X2. Hans Zimmer did the score for this movie, and it was definitely a highlight. I had no idea going into this was a Zimmer score, and throughout the movie I found myself constantly wondering how the score just felt so much more expensive and sophisticated than the rest of the movie. But Zimmer does that for a lot of movies. The theme is a lot darker than your traditional uh, superhero score too, and I guess you could say it doesn't feel like a superhero soundtrack, but I can see why he'd do this. This movie is more about the fall of a hero than a bunch of heroes teaming up to fight the bad guy. A lot of this movie focuses on the X-Men having to take on one of their own, and a big hype theme wouldn't really work with that. The action set pieces are very few and far between in this movie as well. There's one pretty early into the movie, another on a street, and the final one, the third act, um, is on the train. But the, the, the scenes feel very cramped and claustrophobic. For example, the fight scene on the street has to be the most cramped city street I've ever seen in a movie. And this could all work fine for fight scenes that are much more personal, like one person versus a few people, or one person versus another person, something like that. But most of these scenes involve two groups fighting each other, and due to that, the reason it, uh, it just doesn't work. I will say though that there are a lot of really cool showcases of the powers of the X-Men, and there's a lot of really subtle and clever ways that we see members of the team build off each other in fights. Nightcrawler also gets the most to do in this movie since maybe X-Men 2, but it's not most as in like he gets good dialogue or he gets good story choices, he just does a lot of really cool things in fights. And it was really nice seeing these little moments of characters using their powers to one-up each other. Outside of the fight sequences, however, I dare say that most of the characters are written like absolute trash. A uh, Xavier, Eric, and Jean herself are the only characters who get any lines worth a damn. Quicksilver has maybe four lines and then is sidelined for the rest of the movie in the most underwhelming fashion possible. Out of the fights, I can't remember Kurt or Nightcrawler uh, saying anything. Storm puts some ice cubes in Cyclops' drinks once, and all Beast does is jump off things like a, like a dog. 
It really feels like they had a list of characters they had to include in this movie and they couldn't figure out how to use any besides the tree I mentioned earlier. Sophie Turner did her absolute best uh, with what she was given and I really hope she goes on to do a lot better stuff than this because she is she was great in Game of Thrones. I think Michael Fassbender's Magneto was my favourite part of the overall movie because he just elevated every scene for me. I also think that for some reason his writing was pretty great while every other character suffered in that department. Like, everything Magneto said was really good but then everything one of the other characters would say was just terrible. You've probably heard that the third act of this movie had to be reshot due to being uh, the original being seemingly too similar to a different Marvel movie that released around the same time and after seeing it I can only guess that this movie's third act was basically identical to Captain Marvel. Halfway through this movie, you would think the necessary progression will be for there to be some sort of space battle with a certain hero who can fly in space. But none of that happens, and instead we get a completely out of nowhere fight on a train that makes no fucking sense. This is one of these movies that unfortunately really suffers from how jarring its reshoots are. I would very much like to see the release of the original version of this movie at some point, because I think it definitely would have improved the movie quite a bit. A couple minor things I want to touch on is that this movie basically ticks every box on movie cliche, or, uh, cliche sorry, lines or scenes. Every second scene is ridiculously over the top, or someone says something so cheesy and tropey that it could only be a joke, but that everybody keeps moving on seriously anyway. This movie also only has one F-bomb, and it's so unbelievably out of left field and unnecessary, and from the complete weirdest choice of a character that I could only laugh at it. Overall this movie isn't terrible. There are quite a few things that work pretty well, but this is a very bland, uninteresting movie. It's forgettable, and in a lot of ways being forgettable is worse than being terrible. At least if a movie is terrible, you'll remember it as such. It could be fun bad. But this movie just... It's something that... Nothing stands out. It really sucks that the franchise ended on such an underwhelming and disappointing way, but I guess the only people we can blame for this is Fox, so this movie is middle of the road for me on a 5 out of 10. But thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you, and have an awesome day.